Hello, welcome to channel Moraka PDX. This is uh, Tony, and uh, behind the controls in control is Daniel. Hello again. All right, move on to the next episode. Um, we're we're back to our old setup, so we should have uh, less, if none, interruptions. Uh, what do we do? Directorial, directorial override. Fix the NSC energy converters. Okay. I can't remember if we were trying anything else, so I would just try to make your way to the objective. Well, we were talking about making sure we didn't miss anything with AT. I kind of remember that, you know? Mm -hmm. But other than that, this is the last little thing of three things that we had to do. Yeah, we had knocked out the side mission. We maybe were trying to get back to Adi and see if there were more side objectives, but... Um... We did, though, and there wasn't anything okay. at the time. Okay. Yeah, then I would just knock out the next main objective. That's, like, uh, friendly. So you should see the NSC energy converter chamber. Is that... Maybe... Uh, yeah, there it is. Might be the one that lets you see I don't into it. Like that sound. Oh yes. New control point. Are you gonna declare it from these guys? Um. I was watching some video and they were talking about how the like, cover mechanics were. Um, much heavier in the earlier prototype phases, and then they ended up moving away from it, which is interesting. There's a lot of talk about how this power you're using right now, launch, is just like so OP, um, which is true, and can be seen as both a good and a bad thing. I mean, it's total power fantasy level stuff, but it does make me very curious as to how Control 2 will handle things. It reminds me of the gravity gun in Half-Life 2. Right. Very but that happened at the end of the game. Like the last yeah. quarter of the game or something. It was late, definitely late in the game. Yeah. I'm not supposed to go in there, huh? Uh, no, you don't have the thing that makes you immune to the... That's a good idea. Okay. Yeah. That was a good idea. Uh, you're fine. I don't think you can clear this. You don't even have the objective for it, so it's like pointless. Okay. Capture the control point. Oh, you got some upgrades. Uh, so you have nine points. Health and launch and melee damage. Oh, and overall energy. Um, honestly, I don't even know how to tell you what the best course for min-maxing this would be. Um, I mean, obviously, some more health is nice. Yeah, like, maybe just the, yeah. How much do I have left? You got seven. It's up in the upper right of the oh. circle. Oh, man, I think I've been kind of sleeping on this. Maybe. Uh, yeah, 25% launch damage. One point for 25% increase in launch damage is just sounds pretty, fucking crazy. Pretty, yeah, and that's another 25% right there, but it costs two points. Oh, okay. I mean, I think, obviously, launch is like the shit. Um, it does cost energy, too, so like that would be the other thing. But, I mean, I, if you completely ignore your health, then... You become a glass cannon, so it's like you do need to consider. But that's probably not a bad way to go in terms of minimaxing things. And then there's that upgrade. If you go back to abilities, there's that sub ability for launch. So if you go over all the way to the right, 
the grenade thing. Oh, okay. So that's that's when you can start um, catching grenades. Okay. Yeah, then you start picking people up. Um, I honestly never really did a lot of, like, grabbing enemies. Um, I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. Um, it could just be a skill thing. So you can construct um, uh, another weapon. Hmm. Some of the resources are shared, so you probably are only going to be able to build one of these. So if you want basically a machine gun or a shotgun is the question. Um, yeah, so obviously you get in their face, you're going to do a shit ton of damage. Um, Dude, I got shotgun fever right now, so <laughs> it makes perfect sense. Have you had a chance to even use your Mossberg? Yes. But not since I put a shorter stock on it. Um, I'm really excited about it. And actually, the package I was waiting for was 250 rounds of birdshot. So I uh, just don't have any gas to go out into the woods. So, That's But next weekend, I've got probably 200 rounds of buckshot and 250 rounds of birdshot. We're going camping. Maybe we should figure out if we can line those up. Where are you going camping? Um, on the coast. Oh, okay. Till the like course. Lincoln, Lincoln City area. There's got to be some places to shoot near there. Anyway. Um. Uh, anything else I can do? Nope. You, you need one more resource to be able to get the other gun, so you're just short for that. What do I do with my mods? This is the ability to make mods, which is like, really? Because, huh. I mean, it makes sense and you're just sitting there on like massive excess amounts of resources, I guess, that you can do it, but you're also going to have massive excess up. amounts of mods that you're collecting. Again, the resource, the entire system here is like the weakest part of the game, and I don't think that that is an extreme thing to say. It is hopefully an area that they massively improve in Control 2, um, because... Honestly, this entire system just feels burdensome and unnecessary. Um, it doesn't feel like it adds very much to the game. Boost damage after kills, 38%. Damn, that's actually sick. Um, sure. General damage boost. Is it actually for your weapon? Is it ghosted or not? No, it's not ghosted. Okay. Yeah. So you could equip it. I might. Damn. Um, extra couple of projectiles. That tightens the choke. That's right. interesting. Yeah. I might actually like that one. That would give you, so the nice thing about like closing the choke, and I know you're aware of this, so that I'm kind of speaking <laughs> yeah. broadly, is that you can then therefore have greater range. Yeah. But uh, even at close range, that even also just makes it more devastating. Or it keeps all your Because because so if you if you imagine a shotgun is firing like a cone outward. Yeah. Um, and so the choke would mean that that cone is tighter. Um, and therefore the projectiles, which it's only going to have so many projectiles when it fires, the, the spread will be more narrow. And the more projectiles they hit the target, the more damage you're going to do. So sorry for that very obvious lesson that I'm sure 99% of anybody watching a video game video knows all about. But Well, there is that like stereotype with shotguns being like a blunderbuss that does just shoot out a wall of projectiles but even that is kind of not true you know they're they're generally pretty tight groups until you choke. get like really far right out. right 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 yeah the choke's actually pretty high because you're usually like duck hunting or, or something and you know it's not it's not like you're on a pirate ship needing yeah. to hit like 15 people in front of you yeah so now i have a choice between two weapons is that right yeah, so one of these buttons lets you change. Uh, try, um, fuck, I honestly don't remember. Uh, it's gonna be, try triangle. No, that's your melee attack. Um, there square. you go, square. Oh, so this is my, okay. And you can have, what is, shoot, I can't remember. I think only two, okay, yeah. You can only have two equipped. So you're gonna end up eventually getting like six weapons, I think. But you can only equip two at a time. And I've heard complaints about that, that you should be able to cycle through more of the weapons. Um, I don't know what my own thoughts on that are, really. I, I think maybe at least one more would probably be I personally be nice. get so frustrated. I had this huge argument with this kid about carrying 
two primary weapons mm. and a bunch of sure, sure, sure. Stuff. in a purely realistic fashion yeah. it becomes very impractical yeah. I agree with that. he's like i could carry two rifles and a pistol and I'm like, hey, could he? like, no well i mean like yeah but like running very very parkouring, yeah, 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 one yeah. man arm no shut up i mean if you were I, whole, if on a defensive level sure but I, on an offensive level absolutely not if you were in the reserve and then you were like gonna go to a front line. Yeah, I can see you like carrying a fucking stupid amount of stuff, but you would put it down somewhere. Yeah. You know, and then Retreat. you would probably have a pretty minimal amount of stuff when you're actually in the thick of it. Yeah, yeah, because mobility becomes so important. You know, like there might be minor exceptions to that where like you're gonna assault something and you have like very heavy body armor and a lot of backup with you or something, but mm -hmm. yeah, no, I mean, it's just... Yeah, like, oh, are you a bodybuilder? Oh, you're right. not? You're some exactly. chubby dude? That look, like, no, shut up, you're not carrying two nine-pound rifles mm -hmm. that are fully loaded and spare ammunition for both of them, like, shut up. Yeah, I was playing a RPG with this guy who, the Game Master was a, um, he was, he was a non-combat veteran, but he was a military, um, Veteran is, you know, he had gone through his entire period of service, and I, I had a character, and I was like, yeah, I had a, you know, a battlefield rifle, probably like an M16, and I think, I think my character was claiming to have 16 rounds of magazines on him at all times. He was just like, how many? He was like 16 mags, like of full ammunition, like. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, uh. He's like, absolutely not. <laughs> and I was like, I mean, that's. You're prepared for like the Alamo. That's ridiculous. Uh, yeah. And I was like, but I mean, again, realistically, I mean, like maybe you would want to carry it. I mean, like maybe like a duffel bag, and then you would put it somewhere. Yeah. I mean, even those like uh, crazy gear things that you see and stuff probably like max out at eight. Yeah, I think typically most chest rigs hold six. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. But six is kind of a lot, especially if you're in the really bad situation. That's two mags deep, and you want to be as flat to the ground as possible. So most guys actually stick to just three on their chest, and maybe one or two on their belt. And that's kind of typical battle loadout. Crazy. Three on your chest and two on your belt. And maybe a backpack with like a bunch more in them. You might have a backpack full of them. It's interesting, this battle. This one's definitely designed to like let you focus on your gun, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, Although I guess you could close and then you start finding things to launch, but... So the, the music thing happens, so everyone's dead. When you hear that sting at the end... Um, oh, but then they spawn in more. There you go. Sucks to be that guy. Oh, this guy is far away. Blah. The headshots. So um, I can't remember what mode we have this in, but I'm pretty sure it's in uh, performance mode. Um, 60 frames per second was a game changer for me playing this game. Yeah. Because the headshots are so helpful. And when I had this on, um, when I had this on quality mode, I couldn't like 30 frames per second made it really hard. You know what? Go to the settings real quick. The uh, top right button. Uh, options. Go to audio. No, display. Yeah, we have it on performance mode. So you, you actually, you could click it over and just like see how it feels. Because you do get, I think, it hopefully turns on ray tracing, even though it doesn't talk. Oh, it does. So you're going to switch to 30 frames per second, but you're going to have ray tracing on. Um, so the game's going to look better, but you're going to have half the frame rate. So let's uh, see what how it feels. I already feel like you're like, yeah. swimming through like water. Oh like... yeah, no, I actually hate that. <laughs> I instantly hate that. I didn't think it was gonna bother me. Yeah, yeah. I panned instantly. Did not like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was fascinating. I didn't think I was gonna notice it, but I it was, it was it. bad. At least that guy looks like a. So there is a, so it's actually in an expansion, which makes it maybe less likely, but um, in one of the expansions for this, there's a whole, like a lunar module, 
and this astronaut and this like all this space talk and it had me seriously thinking the remedy was working on a game that would be set in space now i don't know but i was really getting hopeful for what a what a crazy idea like a remedy space based game like dead space remedy mm, i mean sure but it, i think it would be a little bit more nasa punk like set like using contemporary space technology and stuff like that so um whereas you know dead space is much more futuristic but um I'm sure Dead Space actually would be a heavy influence. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a heavy influence in any concept on that. I did not think I was going to be able to jump that time. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, totally did. All right. I think... What are we at? One more. Yeah, you can see the bar. It's got two-thirds full. With the rule of threes applies here. Um, so the rule of threes is a common game design thing that Remedy is literally canonized into their story, into their into their universe. Um, although to be fair, the rule of three is is a common trope, uh, trope, uh, and mystical occult concept, I would say. So the overlaps, I think, just make it perfect. Um, where is that thing supposed to go? I, I imagine it's got to go higher. Maybe lower, but... Oh, yep, lower. Okay. Personally, there's like 4,000 of those right there. Did you go into that escape room down there? Let's go lift the lockdown. No, I don't think so. I feel like it's been a long time since we read anything, which is extremely bizarre for control. There's nothing to read in here. Emergency supply storage. How about that? Okay. All right. It's just resource trash. Cabbage. Packing <laughs> cabbage. All right. Uh, oh, into the control room now. Lift the internal lockdown using the directorial override. So here you are executing your authority. Director of the Federal Bureau of Control. Black Rock Quarry. Yeah, that's you know coming. What's up? Um, go to the screens. Left. Uh, oh, okay. The power levels and the water levels, which are all back up all the way. Uh, we got something to read here. Okay, Federal Bureau of Control reminder regarding drafting any public facing material while penning, while penning any notification of death related to the Willow AWE, please adhere to the following guidelines, words slash phrase to use in the service of his, her country, regret, proud slash pride will be remembered, words slash phrases to avoid, Alaska, scissors, Blood slash bleed, loss, apologies and sorry. Yeah. Wow. So I mean, um, obviously the Bureau of Control is is um, very used to spin hit the go to or to hit the filter and move over to unread. It'll save you a lot of time. Next game is Wednesday at eight. Usual spot. Hazard owes me twenty dollars. Arish still on fucking winning streak. Someone please figure out how he's cheating. Thompson suspended for a game because of the shady dealing incident. Guy, I owe you sixty. I brought beers last time, so it's Hespidinal's churn. Uh, read us. So um, this is just a little bit of um, context for a side mission that relates to Arish, who is the security guard in the um, power plant section that you met. Mm -hmm. uh, he's part of a squad, and this is all people that he is related to, knows, and works with who have a um, regular um, card game. So you're going to get a mission. It's going to involve these people. This may or may not in add to endearing you to any of the stuff that's going on. 
uh, I don't know. I mean, it's it's definitely better than nothing, because otherwise you really are just sent there on this task with only the weight of the voice performance of Arish to make you care about it. And I don't know. It is what it is. The 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 complexity that Remedy set themselves up for this, and it's a stark contrast when you look at Alan Wake 2. This is set up to be non-linear. You can approach missions in um, a, a pretty non-linear way, and it forces them to not be able to have you interact with characters in the cinematic manner uh, as deeply as you do in Alan Wake. And I think that heavily affects a lot of it. And I think it also really affected people's connection to um, Jesse Faden uh, a little bit. Although there may be other ways they could have improved that. She has been criticized that she handles things a little too well, even though you, you learn more and more that she's experienced a lot of these paranatural events uh, it's just gonna spawn in mobs you just kill them there's nothing crazy here I know I just didn't really interrupt you um, those criticisms are, are I don't know they're probably pretty fair I mean in the sense that we don't know her well enough to understand that until a little bit later and mostly you have to read like files and things like that to learn that so there probably was a slightly better way to get us to be on the level of Jesse in terms of how nonchalant and blase she is about everything she's experiencing. I mean, she, she does kind of openly acknowledge it, but in the most you know, kind of banal way that she's in some of the weirdest shit ever. I do like how... I do like when they do it, and they, and she sort of says that this is like actually the first place she feels comfortable, because the weirdness that she's experienced is so much more alienating out in the normal world. Whereas here, this is this is nothing but about like all the weird shit that's going on. And maybe if there was a way of exploring that a little bit more, I think people could have possibly connected a little bit better. It was just. Something that I think doesn't resonate or wasn't focused enough on. Well, it jumps right into her being in this place. They didn't get to experience how alien it was outside of it. Right. And they very much later spend a little bit of time exploring it. Forces contained. The lockdown. I wish I could remember this guy's name. It would be really helpful for comment. Trench? Well, it's Trench is the character, yes, but the oh. voice actor. So this is the voice actor for Max this Payne. came here to do. Um, at least in all subsequent Max Payne's after the first one. You mean Mark Wahlberg? Yeah. I just watched Ma Monty Zander's channel's video on um, Alan Wake 2, which, by the way, is amazing. And makes me... It sets the bar for me, like, beyond... Beyond, beyond. Because I haven't even released my first video essay, and it's not going to be remotely close. I mean, he literally has, like, these people doing these songs, like, the, like original songs are, are made, and he has these... It's just so good. Absolutely crazy. One of the best ones. I've seen a couple really high quality videos about Alan Week 2, and, um... Big nod That's there. it. The other sector should be open now. What's the name? Monty yeah, he leveled up like crazy. I'll risk it. Shout out the white lady as well. Floor is lava. Okay. I'm doing my best not. I will not um, regurgitate. Regurgitate. <laughs> Sorry. Drinking the whiskey. Uh, regurgitate um, content from their their videos. Um, more, if anything, more maybe a reaction to their. Um, impressions uh, that you may get. Uh, otherwise, it's it's all me. Um, that is my intention in commentary. 
Back at the beginning of that room, there was an elevator that went down, and I felt like I should have maybe explored that, but I'm also curious to go check on Ati. Uh, yeah, see, he's got a, another side mission, I don't remember. I feel like we kind of come across... I don't know what is the threshold for him to add missions. Well, we just kind of took care of all three of those objectives. Yeah. You, you might have to do, though, you might have to go back to... Yeah, you might have to speak to Emily before something... Whoa! Goodness. I don't know if you have to speak to Emily first. Whoa! I like how you just rip concrete right out of the bowl or floor. It's just like... I wish I could do that. Whatever you need. Just new get a goal. Done. New goals. Be able to rip concrete out of the ground. Yeah. I might actually have to, like, do more than sit on my ass. Oh, you. Whoa! You don't have to have a grenade upgrade yet, do you? No. It might be easier to just go down there. Oh, but there's some new... Oh, fuck. Oh, no! All bad. Who is shooting? Good question. Hmm. Might be another mob in here somewhere. There's whoa, 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 whoa. There you go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Whoa, whoa, back up, back up, back up. I was trying to dodge, but I guess I ran out of stuff. Yeah, that's not very possible. This guy did a little bit of what's going on. There you go. Right, get out of here. Okay. I'm I'm Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Oh no. That's rough. Okay. Uh, it's fine. If you take him out, I think there's a control point really close, and that will reset your health. Although it might actually just be Just a mag dump. That's what you're Alright. There might be enough health that you worry about it. Uh, and... Oh, yeah. There you go. You're good. Okay. Have you been in that little room over there? I don't know if there's anything in here. Maybe. I don't know. It's just some stairs. Okay. Can't. I don't think you can unlock that door. Just need to go south. So the billboards are there. Okay, so he has no missions. Okay. So if you just go to a control point, um, the closest one is back on the other side of ventilation. And you can just teleport back to the executive room and talk to Emily. And then that's going to unlock your next status of things. And it may uh, unlock new quests from Audi. Again, I don't know. The smart thing would be is to do some research and figure out these things, you know, beforehand, but... Uh. I'm not going to hold you to any expectations on that. Uh, what do I do? You uh, want to fast travel. Oh, duh. And we should look at that board countermeasures, because that's an opportunity for you to get, um... This is where I am, right? Yes. So go to Central Executive. And then uh, talk to Emily. But if we look at that board uh, countermeasures, it'll give you like a side objective. And that again, is just to give you an opportunity to get more experience and power. And I, I recommend like just doing this. I, I, already, I know I already told you this, but to speak this out. My experience is building up XP is important. Yeah. Um, so for much the is fight. expected from the director. The responsibility, the privilege, 
to steer the Bureau into dangerous waters and safely out again. To inspire and lead its people. To protect them. The board is there to advise you, but they want things in return. You hold all this in your old, trembling hands. I had to lose everything before I could see the Bureau is the director's life. <laughs> There's no room for anything else. If the forces contained here escaped, we'd be dragged back into an age of superstition, terror, death. Assuming you think we ever really left that behind. Any emergency, any major containment breach, and the lockdown goes into effect. I implemented this security measure in my first years as director. I knew we were vulnerable. I'd personally seen the cost of sloppiness. I made sure the internal lockdown could only be lifted by a directorial override, only to be used when the director is confident the sectors are safe to be opened again. This way, the director is the last line of defense. And if I screw up, it's on me, and me alone. So this uh, actor is passed, and he is, uh, oh, I need to, oh my god damn it, I need to find his name real fast. Jesse, you made it, and you lifted the internal lockdown. Let's talk, Emily. James McCaffrey. Listen, he Emily. He did get to do his lines in Ellen Week 2. Just tell her. And he did get to see some of the reactions I before he passed. I have been completely That's honest. That's amazing. I have a younger brother, Dylan. When we were kids, we found an old slide projector in Ordinary's landfill. The slides created doorways to other places. Bad things happened. Came through. That's all she gets. The rest stays locked inside. But we found help. Through one of the doorways, we met something. A being. She's like, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Mm -hmm. A being. It's what kind of being? It's hard to describe, but it... She helped us. We managed to turn the projector off. The bad things that came through the doorways were gone. After that, your people came, tried to grab us. Hmm. I ran away. They got Dylan. I left him behind. Bureau agents took your brother? Yes. You covered it up. No one believed me. What if Dylan was Director Trench? <laughs> I just want to find Dylan. Oh, no, no, no. I've been no. looking for him ever since. Oh, think she would have recognized him? D yeah. What yeah, yeah, to yeah. The slide projector? I mean, there's like a 30 year difference, too. What if Dylan's Ati? I thought you took it. The Bureau. Along with Dylan. <laughs> <sighs> I've never heard of it. Time travel. But around Maybe here, Dylan's I assume Emma. everything's classified. Uh, Emily? You know, I looked into yeah. the ordinary AWE case Maybe files Dylan's after you mentioned it. Trench changes. and Darling were both <laughs> involved. Sure. Or a Darling. large area of the containment sector was reserved Dylan for Dylan Darling? And the case hasn't been active right, for a I'll long time. Up. I have <laughs> no idea if anything's still there. I mean, uh, Can you tell just me more about spinning out being you makes think? total sense. Well, well, what, but what if Dylan did get just absorbed She's into been with me ever since FBC? In my head. Kind of did, honestly. I guess. She let okay. me you. I, guess I, I mean, he's not a agent, her, but he loves. is something that we'll get into later. As in a guiding star. Did Polaris know about the hiss? If she got you in here in spite of the lockdown, she's very powerful. So they're speaking to the entity that creates that your spinning circle that Jesse. you see all the time. Now, that Jesse talks, yeah, and Jesse talks to all the time. 
um, like it's a person. Fortunately, I That's can't Polaris, the which file. is the name she gave it. One oh, is Polaris Dillon? Referring to a prime candidate no. for a potential future <laughs> bureau director. Uh, this was logged years ago. Dylan. Is that Dylan? Right, so they just did it. So she just Other said that Dylan was... Which must be well, actually, I don't know if they completely revealed it, but they're talking about um, I know is that Marshall went to the research there was a to candidate the to be a director. After the his first they're talking about Dylan. So Marshall seems like our best lead on Dylan. I need to go out. Mm. How can I get to the research sector? Use my key card. The sector so the research sector is the biggest area. Hmm. There's a lot of hidden things in it. I don't know if you can get to all of them until you level up some stuff, but um, what Emily told me it's entirely designed to powers being connected to things in the past. I am so close to something. Do you feel it? Something's coming. We take turns to come for a visit. I helped you. You owe me now. And when time comes, I will come calling. Nice. Ati is the best! Um, that was interesting. Yeah, yeah, let's do these things. Um, start out and load out. Let's get that out of the way. Go down to your personal mods. Okay, so you have a launched level 1. My sub percent, that seems weak sauce as hell. But you have a level 2. What's that say? Launch uh, over one. Three. Okay, uh, minus 11% versus you're getting how much energy? You currently have level two assigned. Uh, oh, it already said up to. So you can have a total plus 27% total energy, or launch can cost less than 11%. Pro uh, uh, or you can boost yourself with evade at minus 12% energy. I'm going to say total energy is maybe better. I honestly don't know. I, it, it's kind of a wash at I'm these levels. I'm pretty satisfied with what I have right now. I don't care. Yeah, it's kind of a wash at these levels. I mean, yeah. until you, I don't know. Old Boys Club. Main, okay, here's a side objective. For 20 minutes, you can go into the energy converters room and deal with the situation. I would make that your main target and just do it. This, these are the opportunities that I didn't really um, take advantage of. Yeah, I didn't strategize on these because I was so focused on story and things like that. That it, and it wound up making things harder. So here's an interesting thing, and in one of the expansions for Alan Wake 2, there's a written language for the board that is introduced, and that'll probably become pretty important in Control Hi, 2, Jesse. I expect. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a hieroglyph of triangles. Be careful out there. Um, check to see if there's any new um, readable items dropped in this room. Uh, usually every time you visit after a major shift. Although I don't see jack shit, which is interesting. Um, so, you know, maybe not this time. That's fine. All right, move on. Let's uh, go take on these uh, maintenance major targets. Go, go uh, blast their faces. You can teleport from the control point. That would be easier. Or you get some ability points for. Let's see what we can buy. It's a launch level three cost. Wait, launch? Yeah, go to oh. level three. Cost two. So I would unlock that. That's because it's by far the power you can use the most. So uh, fifty percent damage. So another twenty-five percent. Okay, you got two points, so what, what, like, what's your health going to cost? Health or melee at this point. Or, or you can throw grenades. Maybe that's worth I it. I know, it's kind of... You want health or you want grenades? Oh, three? You can't do health, so it's either... That's three. It's pretty much either two. grenades or save it. Okay, so yeah. Do you want to be able to throw grenades or do you want to save it? Yeah, I'll try it. Yeah, I mean, 
I don't it's, really understand how I'm going to do it. Do I press uh, R1? Like it's I it's like you launch everything else. Okay. So you just have to make sure that it, the target reticle is on it. But it's okay. got the it's it's usually not hard because it's so visually highlighted. Um, oh, okay. So this is the ability to add missions. I would accept all of these and honestly knock them all out. I would just do them. Um, can you only do three at a time? Probably that's what it looks like. Okay, that's fine. So these challenges are, I think, passive. So you just have to kind of like strategically do them. Uh, so this might mean that you need to like run through certain places. Um, so maintenance major target. So you tell, just knock that one out. Just teleport down to, to the area. So it's in, uh, what did it say? Okay, and energy something. You were there. What are you doing? It, it, bam, bam. Go back. I, I don't know. I didn't remember what it said. So Go for fast travel. If you remember it. No, it had it highlighted because it's it's our main objective. So yeah, in, in the converters. So you want the closest one to the converters. Go down. Uh, that is ventilation is potentially the closest one. It's a little hard to say because of the way the map works. But yeah, try it. Ventilation might get you the closest to it. I mean, I, I agree. Like, the map does make it tricky to figure out where to go. It's... Could be a complaint, but honestly, it's so much about the um, atmosphere. Am I going to the yellow part? Yeah. Okay. That's where you... So it's your primary objective. So, it's highlighted. So that'll tell you where to go. It's about as clear as a direction as you're going to get. Uh, the control room error. Oh. That's hard to say. I don't know. Let me just see what happens. Worst case, you got a backtrack. Yeah, control. That's what we want, right? Did, did that not work? Uh, what? I selected it. Is this because you're already on the right level? Uh, maybe. Energy oh, converters. I need converters. Oh, maybe. So you don't you don't need to move levels. You just need to get the right spot. Oh yeah, yeah. Here you are. Yeah. This is it. You just gotta figure out where the baddies are and kill them. Oh, well, there's one. Dude, I can already love this. Whoa! Oh! Shit! Mmm. Well, you were like just outside of the range of the explosion. Oh, there's a main dude. What's it? Agent. He just has like an ID number. Like, that's hilarious. I like this guy. I, I, so, I didn't do any of these ever. So, seeing these like kind of semi special mid bosses is new to me. It does, to me, what I suspect speak a little bit to some of the projects that never got pulled off. This is, that they were constantly trying to make some sort of like new persistent game that used some of these mechanics. And they always got spoiled shit, um, from being able to pull it off. Um, let's see if there's some health drops now. Anyway, uh, whoa. Okay. Anyway, um, uh, I should note, your ammo is shared regardless of what you switch with your weapon, so if you're better off with a shotgun, just stick to the shotgun. Yeah. Um, because if you switch, you're gonna still have a limited ammo. That is definitely something I've heard 
talk about is like an interesting critique about how it doesn't make sense. Well, but, or it does make sense it, considering it's a weird weapon. Right. It's not a kinetic weapon. Well, it, I mean, it's just a balanced decision, and so. Like, if you add a third weapon, it almost makes that whole situation worse. It could explain why you can only switch to two weapons. Um, because of your shared ammo economy. Um, because of the recharging ammo situation. So, honestly, if they went three, you would almost need to actually introduce an actual ammo system. Um, because it, it starts to become an issue, but having three weapons allows a little bit more potential flexibility and diversity. It's, it's hard to say. I'm sure, I mean, you, you kind of have to trust that, I mean, they tried it and determined that this was the best choice, but some of those decisions can't really be understood until you've had the many, many extra months of the game being in the game. So it's a little hard to say. Um, and then I personally don't have enough opinion to say one way or the other. No, I, it, it makes sense for exactly this scenario. Yeah. I mean... I mean, again, because like, you're trying to design tension so that the gameplay is feeling engaging and uh, impactful. Um, but you also need to make it not feel unfair and... and uh, were boring. Ooh, that was really rough. Oh, and they failed you on it. That fucking sucks. First try. That's uh, rough. All right. Okay. That's that's fine. These will come up all the fucking time, so I'm not worried about it. But all right. So you gotta find Marshall. So we're back to the main objective. You go to fast travel and you should be able to get yourself as close as possible. Uh, you get, yeah, you get these side objectives. You literally could just run through the areas, I guess, and hope that things spawn, allowing you to. Well, you don't have the weapon pure, so like I wouldn't bother with that one. But um, yeah, just head toward ventilation, I guess, because that's your, yeah. God, I love him so much. That should be your Halloween costume. Okay, look at that quick painting over there. So I guarantee you that that is um, Bright Falls, or what's it called? Bright Falls? Yeah, I think it's called Bright Falls. That's a picture from Alan Wake. Alan Wake 2, or what would be Alan Wake 2. You should paint that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I challenge you to paint that. I challenge me to paint that. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's easy. So, fine. You're going to Bob Ross that. No, Bob Ross that. Yeah. Ati Ross that. You should dress up. Ha happy little You should mistake. film it. You should dress up as Ati. Oh, my God. And I challenge you to paint no, that. No, you're leveling me up beyond where I'm like. No, I have a zero. I have a get negative a, zero channel. Get a wig. No. This is how you go from zero to a million no. overnight. Oh my god. I just challenged oh, you to man. make you into a million subscriber YouTuber. Bob stuff. Ross, Aussie. Bob uh, Ross Aussie, sing a painting. Aussie Bob Ross, um, uh, Alan Wake 2 painting, Easter egg. Okay. All right, you're, I mean, this is genius. Challenge. Okay. I don't know about that, but uh, okay. Write that down. No, well, this is the advantage of the fact that we drink so much beer and whiskey while we yeah. do these. Is I yeah. don't remember anything. This is like a great cocaine thought. Like okay. Tiger blood. Yeah. 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 This is a Charlie Sheen moment. Okay. Uh, you need to clear a mess so. all the way down there. Some area we haven't even been to. Cool. Do it. Gotta clear the clog. Clear it. 
gonna go plunge the toilet. That's the southern part of the map. So, one of the interesting points Maki Zander point, pointed out. There's a point, there's a moment in Alan Wake 2 where Adi is confused and, and wanting, asking to go home. And he's talking about how disturbing it is. And I have to 100% agree because he's talking about how like Adi just seems so omniscient. Like he understands everything that is going on. But there's this moment where he's just sitting on a bed, completely confused. He's in an old home's home. Um, and uh, old person's home um, care facility and he is just like disoriented and confused and it's disturbing because this guy has been sort of like a, a rock of, of like um, just somebody that you understand that like gets what's happening and seeing him in that state is disturbing and I agree with that entirely and I get that very same sense um, it's a very interesting thing to see, but you won't see it until Alan Wake 2. Um, it's like they're trying to shake your perspective. Well, Monty Xander's theory is that that Ati's body is a is kind of like you. I guess you could like let's parallel this way how um, Jesse Faden has a connection to Polaris. So she has connection to this like heightened um, entity of power. So Adi might have a connection of some other entity of heightened power as well. Um, and we've talked before really early on about how there's this trope uh, that's common in Scandinavia of like the janitor or maintenance or keeper of, of maybe the lowest person and probably well, the most important person especially somebody related to the upkeep of something being highly important in that how it, which speaks to how important maintenance is and kind of elevating it on an almost spiritual level and um becomes this common trope uh but it, it's an it, interesting distinction to give him his mortality, that is a fascinating perspective to sit there and be like, but this is maybe just another burdened human with a connection to a powerful entity. And that's, that's an, I mean, it's an interesting thing to do. And we don't see that until Alan is here. Because Adi in control is, is just a omnipresent uh, on the ascension entity. The most common clog is used for money. You did it. Crushed their face. That's a little before. Okay, you can't go in there. Okay, I guess more garbage. So we can already start eliminating some of these, by the way, if you just hold uh, square. So if you're like, I'm never gonna use that, just get rid of it. Yeah, most of these level ones, like you're probably never gonna touch ever again. Might as well get rid of them. Okay. So do you think Adi is like Q? Adi is, the, I mean, sure, yes. Or at least you could say, like maybe Adi is somebody with like Q attached to them. Do you think Adi is like if, the uh, one actually orchestrating all By the way, all of this? for those who don't understand what we're talking about, we're referencing Q from Star Trek Good. with which the is next a generation and Voyager. <laughs> yes. Deep Space Nine. Well, Deep Space Nine it makes one appearance, makes a couple appearances in Voyager, I think. In next generation, he was in the pilot episode. Yes. And it was, it was probably, arguably, the best episode of Next Generation. Well, he was. It's like an hour and a half long. Arguably the best first season episode of Star Trek. Yes. So, I would agree with that. It's amazing. It's like literally watching a movie, and it's. It's well, it's the pilot. It's a two-parter. It is... Uh, it, it, it's a mixed bag. It is... I honestly don't know how to go south from where I am, and I keep running in circles. <laughs> um, okay, like, hold on. Bring up the map one more time. Alright, so... Okay, looking at where you are. 
Uh, you probably have to go through that door. Do I have to go through the coolant pump. No, I think you have to go then? through the door in the janitor's office. No, I tried that. I exhausted the janitor's office, and that's how I ended up out here. I'm super what? lost. No, no, no. I can't be right. Go back in the janitor's office. Yep, go in there. No, what were you doing? This isn't right. No, wait, is it? No, maybe. Fuck, I don't know. What are you doing? Okay, this. Okay. Oh, I see. You see what I'm saying? Like, I'm I see confused. What you're I, don't, I see what you're saying. It looks like it works on the map, but I'm stuck. Nah, I know what you're saying. Okay. Um. Hmm. That's why I went out yeah. into the main okay. room. Yep. And That's the main room doesn't take me there either. Alright, now, now let me see. And this the elevator doesn't yeah. take me there. Mm, let me see the map now. Try the elevator. Super confusing. I mean, I could just be. I've been getting reports that something's tearing up the training grounds. Might be worth checking out. I should be going. Right. You got a lot down the list. Did you find it? No. Oh, cool. Oh, but I'm trying to go to... Clear the maintenance clock. Oh, that could be connected to... I'm thinking I need to go this way to get down and around to it. Could be. I mean, despite this taking forever, you at least are fighting things, which does also contribute to your ultimate power level experience. Jeez, that is a lot of shielded guys. Um, so something I realized, especially after watching Monty Xander's video, is that, um, I, there will have to be another replay. Um, I mean, it was given anyway, we haven't done the commentary of Alan Wake. But after realizing how much extra content from fully watching the videos out of the menu, it's just like, you, you have to do that in the videos Shit. in Alan Wake 2. My old enemy also, there's an entire area I skipped. The pipes. Yes, you're on the right track. He's very clever. He's trying to sneak. Turn into another episode. Got him caught with his hand in the Might as well let him talk and sign out. Yeah. Okay. So, somewhere connected close to here. Yeah. You all find it. So yeah, uh, but 
obviously the extended videos, which I did not take advantage of um, in the playthrough. Although I am glad to see the in-game ones because they have an effect of in, in of, of themselves, uh, even though they're more disjointed. But seeing the full level ones, I think is worthy of um, pursuing for a better contextualization. But this was a pretty exciting episode. Yep. And see you guys in the next one. Thank you. Bye.